All right, next question. My nervous system gets tired in the mid-afternoon, especially after a day with physical challenges as well as mental and especially emotional challenges. Do you have any suggestions on how to lessen this? I worked on my strength and endurance as well as cardio pretty well, but this remains an issue. After a 60 to, min 60 to 90 minute nap, I'm usually pretty ready to start my day all over again. I do sleep for eight or nine hours a night as well. It sounds like you're doing everything good as far as building up your endurance. My thought process would be this might be something that's more like central fatigue. So I don't know your diagnosis, but central fatigue would be something that um, is pretty common probably with multiple sclerosis and with stroke where your brain is just not as efficient. Like nerves just aren't firing as quickly. Neurotransmitters aren't doing their thing as quickly. And it does cause a fatigue that most likely won't um, benefit as much from those everything you mentioned, those traditional methods of kind of working on your endurance, strength training, um, building up that system might not be as effective. So in in when I say that, the the one thing you're doing that's probably good is taking that nap. So if you do have the time in the day to take that nap, I recommend that you just continue to take that nap if it is something like central fatigue. Um, again, I don't know if that's what you're describing. Probably something good to talk to your doctor about and let them help you decide whether or not this is central fatigue. And then it sounds like you're getting good in, um, sleep at night. I would also talk to your doctor about that. There's questionnaires that they can give you to test or to check to see whether or not you're getting good quality sleep. If those, if you are, then again, that might indicate more of this central fatigue. If it is central fatigue, then I would say that is common after a brain injury or an MS exacerbation. And there are other things that you can do that we call energy conservation strategies. So you know, making sure that you are dividing up your tasks so you're not doing a ton of tasks in the same day. The example I like to use or the analogy is like pretend like your body is just like an old outdated iPhone where now you have all these apps that require all these all this energy on an old iPhone, you couldn't have a ton of apps open at the same time. So maybe you can't have a conversation with someone and try and balance your checkbook at the same time, or you can't balance your checkbook and have the TV on at the same time. So making sure that when you do your tasks, you don't have too many apps open at the same time, quote unquote apps open at the same time, you don't have too many things going on. And then also that you're not doing too many things in the same day that might fatigue you. So maybe you're balancing your checkbook, you're organizing your kitchen, you're going to the grocery store, and then you're going out to eat that night. Or you're trying to read an article about your condition, about MS, or about a stroke, and you're doing all these other things. That's just going to drain you. Uh, and then the other thing I would suggest is that the way that you know that that was probably too much is that a good night's sleep seven to nine hours, you should be recovered the next morning. So how do you track that? I tell people to keep a, a fatigue journal. So journaling your fatigue in the morning, zero to 10. So 10 meaning you're full of energy. You could go run around the block 10 times, no problem. Zero meaning you need to spend the entire day in bed. You can't even keep your eyes open. Kind of rate your fatigue in the morning and every evening. And then during the day, Keep just like a rough journal of the things that you do. Some people just automatically keep a calendar and that's fine. So then you already kind of have a, um, a record of what activities you're doing each day. And if you're noticing a trend where you're fatigued at the end of the day, which is okay, you know, maybe you're dropping down to like a three or a two at the end of the day, but then you have a good night's sleep and you're back up to like a seven, eight or nine the next day, that's good. But if you're going to bed at like a two or a three and you're waking up at like a three or a four, then, then that's when you want to start going back and looking at the previous day's activities and maybe start figuring out ways to break those activities up. We call those kind of energy conservation strategies. The other ones are, are um, delegate as much as possible. When friends ask if you, if they can help you, sometimes maybe just delegating some of those tasks to them. They're asking and they, that probably means they really do want to help you. 
So getting help with things like that and then how help with cleaning, cooking, things like that. If you have the financial resources, that might be a good investment to invest in maybe having someone come clean your house, help with meal prep, things like that is another way to kind of keep that bank full. So those would be my suggestions. But first, I would just check and make sure that, you know, you are getting good quality sleep first. Also that you're eating well, because that could be another thing that is making you fatigued that might not be related to central fatigue, and that you're drinking enough water. So those would be my suggestions. Try some of those things, see if that works. If it doesn't, definitely come back next month and kind of ask this question again, explaining some of the things that you've tried and maybe we'll try and problem solve together some other potential possibilities of what could be causing that with some solutions. If you liked that video, check out these two videos down here. If you want even more support or ideas on how to improve your overall health and movement quality, check out our gold membership program. As a member of that program, you will get access to over 300 exercises that are not here on YouTube, as well as access to our monthly live Q&A where you can get your specific questions answered. I enjoyed spending time with you all today, and I will see you here on YouTube in the next video.